Broadcasting you from 88.3 WXUT Studio, this is your Saturday morning weekly news update. It is 7.45 in the morning and today is March 19th. Expect today to be a high of 55 and a low of 36 degrees. These stories were researched and reported by student journalists at UT10 News. Let's begin. Electricity bills have been on the rise across the nation, in some cases increasing by as much as $200 a month. UT10 reporter Samantha Rojas spoke with energy specialist Joe Funk, who says this is due to a higher demand for natural gas, but supply is low due to pipelines being shut down, as well as Russia's war in Ukraine only making a bad situation worse. Funk did offer a bit of advice for people. But for the majority of people that haven't like chosen an energy provider or have not chosen uh, part of the, the choice program, they are on a variable rate, which fluctuates due to that supply and demand. A variable rate is an energy plan that will change as the market changes. A fixed rate energy plan will remain the same until the end of the contract. Most contracts range from two months to five years. With over 100 energy providers in Ohio that one can look through. If you want more information, you can check out Ohio's Public Utilities Commission. Energy isn't the only thing there's a low supply for. UT10 reporter T.R. Medley spoke with a representative from the Lucas County Children's Services, who says there's been a serious lack of homes for foster children for the last five years. Currently, there are around 800 kids in foster care, but only 215 homes. While many factors contribute to this, the pandemic has played a larger part. Shelley Dunn, a foster care and adoption recruitment supervisor for Lucas County Children's Services, gives her thoughts on the situation. So I've been at the agency almost 32 years, and I'm still working with some of the foster parents I worked with when I first came. So a lot of our foster parents, because kids weren't going to school, they didn't have day camp, daycare, whatever, they were like, hey, th th this is hard. This is hard for us. So we have lost a lot of foster parents because of the pandemic. The other thing is that we've been getting a lot of younger foster parents, they come in, and if the kids don't return home, um, they end up adopting them, and then they end up closing. Dunn says in order to solve the issue, funds need to be looked at in terms of how much foster parents are paid, as well as more support from resources such as schools and mental health organizations. If homes can't be found for foster kids, agencies outside of Lucas County have to be utilized, resulting in kids being placed outside of Lucas County, and in some cases, even in other states. We are now in week four of Russia's war against Ukraine, and attacks around its cities have continued. On Thursday, February 16th, during a White House press briefing, President Joe Biden called for an additional $800 million in defense assistance to Ukraine. Also on that day, several sources reported a video of President Biden speaking to a journalist in which he called Putin a war criminal. In a recent study, according to the U.S. News & World Report, suicide rates for pre-adolescent children have increased significantly. Since the year 2000, suicidal ingestion for children ages 10 to 12 have increased over four times. The study also showed a two times greater increase for suicidal ingestion for adolescents. While there are many factors that lead to suicidal thinking, the study's authors did urge caution in connecting the use of social media and suicidal ingestion through drugs and chemicals. If you or someone you know is struggling with suicidal thoughts, please reach out for help and call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit their website. A link to their website can be found on ut10news.com. As we're talking about research, a study at Northwestern University found that sleeping even with a little amount of light can be harmful for your overall health. As high as 40% of Americans sleep with some kind of light on. But the study found participants who slept with a light on for one night already began experiencing reduced glucose and cardiovascular regulation, which is linked to diabetes and heart disease. The turn of the season brings warmer weather, but it also brings allergies. For the 40% of American children who suffer from pollen allergies, they may be battling sickness for longer. The reason? Climate change. According to the University of Michigan study reported by AP News, Researchers found warmer weather allows plants to begin blooming early. Researchers found warmer weather allows plants to begin blooming earlier. As a result, some areas may triple plant pollen levels. As the years go on, it's likely we will see allergy season starting weeks earlier and ending days later. It is estimated about 30% of the world deals with pollen allergies. 
If you are suffering from serious allergies, please visit a doctor as soon as possible. And now we move on to sports. Both men's and women's Rockets basketball teams went to Cleveland last week with hopes of cutting down the nets at the MAC tournament, with the women taking the floor first on Wednesday, March 9th. The Rocket women's basketball team went to the tournament as the number one seed, but that did not guarantee them success. The Ohio Bobcats proved to be a tough first opponent for the Rockets early, with Erica Johnson hitting two from beyond the arc for Ohio, which helped put the Bobcats up on the Rockets. However, a strong finish to the first quarter put the Rockets above the Bobcats on the scoreboard heading into the second. Throughout most of the second quarter, both teams would seemingly match each other bucket for bucket. A jump shot from J.D. Jensen helped give Toledo a 34-32 lead heading into the second half. Toledo started the second half going on a 16-7, which helped give them a 9-point lead over Ohio. That would be before the Bobcats would begin to come back, thanks in part to a Gabby Burst, 3 with 10 seconds left in the third. A three-point play for the Mac's all-time leading scorer, Sierra Hooks, helped to cut the Rockets' lead to just four points. Ohio then went scoreless for four straight minutes, and that combined with a big fourth quarter from Quinesha Lockett, who scored 10 points in the quarter, was enough for the Rockets to break away from the Bobcats and advance to the second round, winning by a final score of 80-67. to Ohio might have been the eighth seed heading into the matchup, but Toledo coach Trisha Kolop knew it would be a battle to the end. I was really proud of our players. Um, I thought going into this game, they're probably the best eight seed team in the country. Um, so we knew that this battle in the first round would be one of the toughest that we'll face. Round two for the Rockets would have them playing Ball State on March 11th in what would be another tough matchup. The Cardinals started the game off strong, making five of their first seven shots. The Rockets weren't able to get their first lead of the game until the second quarter, when Quinesha Lockett made a layup putting the Rockets up 21 to 20. However, Ball State would finish the quarter with the advantage and go into halftime with a 39-25 lead over Toledo. The third quarter would continue to favor the Cardinals, but a three-pointer from Kiara Goss helped Toledo to cut into Ball State's lead at the end of the quarter, with the Cardinals now leading 51-46. Sophia Wired was able to splash down a three with a little over a minute left in the game, bringing Toledo closer with a score of now 63-61, still in Ball State's favor. But a few three throws from the Cardinals helped seal their victory, with a score of 71 to 66, knocking the Rockets out of the tournament. It wasn't just the women's team who struggled in Cleveland, with the men's team for the Rockets having trouble as well. Central Michigan was a tough matchup for Toledo the last time they played, and it was no different in the first round of the tournament, with the game being played on March 10th. There was hardly any separation between the two teams throughout the contest, as almost any time one team would start to get going, the other team would then start to get going as well. A three from Seth Milliner gave the Rockets a 20-17 lead about midway through the first half before CMU answered with a 9-2 run. The Rockets would put down a couple more shots, but they got cold towards the end of the half. Missing seven straight shots going into the break, which helped give the Chippewas go into halftime with a two-point lead. Both teams would seemingly trade baskets to start the second half. Toledo was able to separate a little bit with a 64-57 lead at five minutes left in the game, but Central Michigan would begin to come back in a slam dunk from Harrison Henderson helped CMU regain the lead with 20 seconds left. Ray J. Dennis then drove into the basket, making it a one-point game, 10.1 seconds remaining. And turnover on the inbound gave the ball back to Toledo, but that still wouldn't be the end, with Ryan Rollins missing the first three throw on a one-to-one -one allowing Henderson to rebound it and Central Michigan had enough time to go into the other end of the court for one last shot. However, as time ran out, Dennis grabbed the rebound and set the Rockets into the next round of the tournament after Toledo won 72 to 71. Just a, a proud of our guys, proud of our win. Um, you know, clearly a, a team that uh, didn't panic. The following night, March 11th, would prove to be another tough matchup for the Rockets against the Archon Zips. Akron started the game off making five of their first nine shots and allowed them to get out an early 12 to 7 lead. Toledo would then go into the score nine straight points, bringing them closer to the Zips with Akron now only up 17-14 with 12 minutes left in the first half. A 13-4 run by the Zips, though, gave them a 13-18 lead over the Rockets, with five minutes still left before the halftime. Akron would continue to build on their lead, but Ryan Rollis hit the pair of jumpers which helped bring the Rockets within 10 at the half, with Akron leading 38-28 at the intermission. Toledo came out of the halftime hot scoring, the first six point of the half, and JT Smollett triple was enough to bring UT within one. Xavier Castaneda then hit back-to-back -back threes, continuing to extend the Zips' lead. Toledo would continue to try and come back, but down the stretch, Akron just kept draining shots. And Toledo failed to score within the final minute and a half, 
leading the Akron Zips to take down the top seeded Toledo Rockets with a final score of 70 to 62. And that's it for this week and thank you for joining us today. For more news, make sure to tune in every Saturday at 7.45 a.m. And you can catch UT10 live every Thursday at noon or watch it on WGTE Public Media Fridays at 6.30 p.m. For 88.3 FM WXUT, I'm Matthew Revia and have a great day.